Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is updating firmware on the PLC controller and also updating the application. So um, the application is a compiled uh, file that is stored on the PLC and, uh, and used to run the application and you're accessing that via the web browser. Okay, so Again, festo.com, www.festo.com, end up at the support downloads by clicking here, type in the part number of the servo press kit, just the general one, and then you end up on the software tab, okay? The software tab has two things that um, you want. There's, if, if you already have firmware and you just want to update the application software or the project, I'll call it. I don't know why they call it application software. Anyway, uh, it's all lingo. So basically um, discusses the fact that, hey, after version 1.3, you need to have licensing, which we'll discuss later. The um, application software that you get, if you were to come over here, and download this software by JKB Zip. What you get is um, this. Um, where is it here? Software. Okay, so I've already downloaded this and I'm showing you what files are included. And basically, uh, what you're interested in in the uh, software package is the actual software. So you get these uh, versions here and then you also get these previous versions right here. So previous versions, previous versions, 1.1, 1.11, 1.21, 1.31. This particular one I'm downloading is 1.33. So, and there's some release notes with it and some online help. So we're not gonna download that because we need the firmware and the software. Um, so I'll close this one here, and if I go into this one here, which is going to be the, the config, which going back to the website here, close this and go to the configuration package um, right here. So this config file right here, it's 202 meg. Uh, within that file, you will have everything you see here. So scroll over here. So basically you get, uh, when you unzip it, you'll have you know, a variety of directories and you get firmware and you get software. Firmware, software for each package, okay? Because the firmware and software are a match and you need to install both when you're doing that. Um, this particular one here is, uh, is what we're gonna go to today. And uh, the yellow highlights were what was showing basically did not, um, is not included in the software package. Okay, so you've downloaded these now and we're gonna go to the next step. Uh, the next step is to download the Festo Field Device tool. And I don't know why it's not on this link here, but come up here, just type in three letters, FFT, hit enter. And this right here, um, download this file and install it. And that's gonna take us to the next step here. And if you go back to the quick guide, the quick start guide, and you go to page 21, it discusses this, uh, this Festo field device tool. And I'm surprised there's no link to download it, but basically we've downloaded it now and we're about to use it here. So I'm just gonna start it up. Okay, so start the software up. When it starts up, it'll scan the network. And the idea at this point here is to be on the same uh, subnet. So, you know, Make sure that your uh, your computer is 
already set up properly. So I've got an IP address of this. Everything's on my first three octaves there, 192.168.1. And <clears throat> you should see the uh, the CECC dash X dash M1 controller, which is the PLC that runs the servo press. And then you should see the CMMP dash AS dash M0, which is the servo axis controller. And uh, when you select this and you right click, uh, you go to network settings, you can set up your network settings right here. Uh, and then just hit OK and apply. And the devices both need to be on the first three objects together and then a unique IP, obviously. And like I just showed you here, don't conflict with your PC. Uh, basically, you should have three three uh, IP addresses, one for your PC, one for the PLC, and one for the servo axis. So I've already gone and updated mine to 1.84 and 1.85. And now we're going to move on to the next step here, which is... Um, taking a peek at what is on the controller, the PLC right now. So I'm going to, like I said, right click on the device, go to home page and the home page, uh, we've already got open here. Home page will take you to this basically right here. So let's just see if it does it again. Home page might have a different browser. Okay. So takes you right here. And uh, there's some menus here, okay? If you go to the system information, it shows you that you have this firmware and this bootloader. That's extremely important to understand. And if you go to project info the, under Codasys, it shows you the version of the application software that you have running. So if I go and relate that, back to what I downloaded from the from the config YJ key kit here. Um, basically um, the GCA 0120 would reflect to this version right here. There's the firmware and the one one two uh, software is right here. So that's what's on the controller right now, or what you purchased will be different. And at this point, we need to update it. So the firmware is the first step. I already have the latest firmware, but I'm going to show you what you will experience anyway. And what you see here, that's so successfully connected. Uh, this this is what's installed in what they call the repository. So these files exist in the repository. Uh, the red means that you can't use it on this particular hardware. And the yellows typically mean that it was a file that was added manually. And the greens are the ones that were are able to be used on the on the hardware that you have, and uh, were downloaded automatically by this right here. So at this point in time, you would uh, first of all select the bootloader, and then you say download firmware, and it'll go through its process. I'll just do it over again. Two two two. And then it'll reboot. If you don't do the bootloader first, then it'll be a waste of your time. It shows you what it did, what it has done. Sorry. And you reconnect to the device. And then you download the firmware, which is 346. And if you don't have the files in here, then you go to where you downloaded everything and you pick the files. In my case, my files were stored right here. So I downloaded this package, which is the 333. 
I unzipped it. The firmware bootloader was here and the firmware is here. So I could say it, select that and say open. Um, but again, it's already loaded right here. And then I can say download firmware and follow the procedures here. Just going to pause the video so that we don't have to wait for the whole time it downloads. It's important to note that uh, the file itself gives you a, a uh, understanding of what they've updated in that revision. All right, so now it's done. The firmware update explains to you what it did. And now after I close this here and I scan, you will see that the firmware is updated right here on the right under the firmware area here. As well, if you're in the web browser, go to the uh, home page again and you end up uh, right here. And it shows you right here that the bootloader was here and that the firmware is there. So we've got the firmware up to date now. Now the next thing is to update the application software or the project. <clears throat> so you basically come into here and you're going to say restore. Um, you can select it from up top here too, same thing. And you're going to go to the file. And again, before we do that, just want to show you the browser here that we were in. So I don't, don't need that. The code assist project info is nothing loaded. So basically, um, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to pick the file for the software. And this is the file. So I'm updating the 133. Hit open and you need a password here. Um, it's lowercase root and capital F, lowercase E-S-T-O for Festo, and then hit OK. And it'll sit here and it'll download and do its thing. I'm just gonna pause the video while it does this. So it's installing the, or restoring the, the compiled version of software that Festo has provided and putting it on the controller for runtime. Okay, so now it's been updated. It provides information on the update. And you can cancel this now. And close this. I'll just close this, close this for the heck of closing it. And now I can go back to the home page if we've forgotten how to get there. And Again, the information about the firmware and everything is right here, and the IP address and everything. And then what we just did was we updated the project info, so or updated the project itself. And now it shows you that you've got the 133 installed, 133. Um, and now if you go to the web visualization, you see that you have a slight problem, okay? And this is related to the licensing, okay? So when you update, uh, I showed you on the support portal before, on the support portal before that uh, it says right here, when updating a version less than 1.3 to a version greater than or equal to 1.3, licenses are required. And if you don't have a license, you need to get a license. There's basically two licenses. There's the basic or the advanced. When I showed you the uh, ordering process, the advanced is the extended uh, portion where you buy the advanced force mode, which is basically the controllers being used to control the force and uh, the controller itself is in torque mode. And at this point, you need to update the, the licensing. So let's do the updates here. We need to get back to the home page here. Uh, 
I need to go to app license. So the app license here, app license not found. Okay. So again, on duplicate, go back, go back. So that runs away. So again, no valid license is shown down here. And now over here, you're going to need to, if, if you're updating this, you should be getting a file from your local sales rep or from uh, some other method. So I'm going to go in here and choose my file. And my file is right here. Click on update and say install. I have advanced licenses. That's consistent. And you'll see here that I have a uh, big red text here. And this is good that we run into this. So basically, when I purchased the license from Festo, I had a different controller. And uh, I've replaced the controller since then. So I need to buy another license. So. And what I'm going to show you here is information. So this is the product name, ID. So I'm going to I'm going to change my PLC back to the proper one so the license fits. But uh, if you run into that, that's what you're running into. When you order a new PLC, then you need to get a new license to go along with it. Okay, so I've I've done this procedure over again, and now I have the proper app license. Um, Again, if I was to install this and say install, it says, okay, license has been installed. Everything's all good. Serial number is all good. Everything's a match. So again, recap, replacing PLC, you need a new license. And that's the, how it works. And I can go to the license overview here and I can see that I have a license. And now when I go to my web visualization, I don't have this thing right here now so we have now updated program application firmware license everything 